<laughs> so I've seen this thing with people, as in my students, that they are not able to analyze charts properly. Maybe because the education system in India is not about analysis in English. It's always been about uh, language and all. But I think since they have set this question here, so they might be, you know, having this uh, curriculum over there that they have to go through pictures and all in English too. So in India, I think that's completely mathematical where you deal with graphs and all. But uh, for them, for the English or the Americans or the Canadians, this might be the case that uh, infographics are a part of their education and a prominent part. So that's why they might, uh, you know, they, th that's why they might be doing this thing in IELTS also that they ask you to analyze a graph and all overview and all and write about it. So let's do this as in with this, it's not only about English here. It's something that I'm going to teach you about how, a, how an infographic is made and uh, what you can do about analyzing it because when you have known the procedure behind making some behind, uh, you know, how something is made, then you are able to get to the, you know, get to level one and then you can analyze it properly for you to be able to write it. So let's see how a pie chart is made, how then we will go about how, you know, an IELTS question is made in regard to this, how they um, take two or three pie charts and then combine them and then they give you a task to write upon. It's all about knowing the mechanism that is behind making a pie chart, how they are combined, what is expected uh, when a dynamic chart is given and when a static chart is given. So what, what, what the expectations are and what the making procedures are. And if you have under, if you get to understand these things, then you're able to write about uh, anything related to pie charts. And it's not only about the language over here and in your exam also that you should write increase, decrease, incline and blah, blah, blah. Incline is not a word even in that sense. So let's see as in how a pie chart is made and then we'll combine various pie charts to make a task one question that could appear in an IELTS exam. So suppose you have four friends, Sam, Kate, Ken and Lisa, and they have certain amounts of money 1,000 rupees, 2,000 rupees, 3,000 rupees, and 4,000 rupees. Now, this is something very, um, you know, basic, and you do not need to apply brains to understand what the picture wants to say. And, you know, for this, you have to read a lot to understand what the, you know, scenario is. Suppose these four people are contributing to a cause, and these are the amounts they have paid. So, if... I have to get an idea of what the contributions are like in comparative terms. Reading the whole table and then analyzing it is something I would say that involves a lot of effort and humans are not very keen on making efforts. They are all about, you know, knowing the things in a, I would say, concise way. And that's what infographics actually do. They uh, give a pictorial essence of numbers so that you are able to understand something in a jiffy or maybe after two or three seconds. So suppose I have, and pie charts are all about comparisons. They convert the data, you know, whatever the actual figures are, they convert the data into something that is corresponding to the given figures, but out of 100. So suppose you have 900 rupees out of 1000, then of course the proportional thing in, uh, percentage terms is 90 on 100. So what they do is that they take into account uh, figures and then see what the, you know, proportional amount will be when you have taken the whole as 100 and those uh, figures out of 100 are called um, your percentages. So these compare things in comparative terms and those terms are in percentages. So suppose if I see this thing only and if i just have to calculate their percentages you know the whole you know the overall is 10000 rupees here 1 2 3 4 yeah so if i have to calculate the percentages for uh, them i would be getting at something of this sort this so since we have 10000 rupees in total so percentage 10% 20% can 30%, Lisa, 
forty percent. It's easier to say forty percent than it is to say four thousand. So you have come to the percentages as in if it's four thousand out of ten thousand, then it's gonna be forty out of hundred. So that forty is forty percent, which is Lisa's contribution to the cause. Ken's is thirty percent. Kate's is twenty percent, and Sam's is ten percent. Now again, if I have to read, you know, all the percentages, it will take uh, time ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Now this is not something that you looked at and you got the essence. And you know, an easy step to know this is that you have a picture in front of you that says everything in itself. So friends, money, percentages, and now what we have is a pie chart representing. Or maybe comparing the figures. Fine. If you look at the chart itself, you get to know that yellow is the biggest and uh, blue is the uh, smallest, and uh, the other two colors have sectors that are comparable. And that's the beauty of infographics that you do yeah, that you did the smallest uh, you know amount of work and you got everything. Not everything, maybe, but uh, the long and short of it. So forty percent, thirty percent, twenty percent, ten percent. Now this is what the um, pie chart is about. The concept of pie charts is about where you get to know everything um, in different sectors, and uh, all things in different sectors, and those sectors represent the extents, and they compare you know categories. So Sam's is the low, uh, Sam's is the smallest, and Lisa's is the biggest, and all those things. So if you so. From here we could get here, but that's something you know very very basic. That's something that uh, uh, even will not appear in your exam ever. So a little more complex is when you have contributions by these people only, but into different years. <laughs> so suppose you have these two things <laughs> that um, these people contributed to a cause in two different years. And the amounts are different, so of course the percentages are going to be different, but the overall is the same. So I have done that on purpose right now because I need to explain the concept. So if you see Sam's contribution now is two thousand in two thousand twenty, of course, uh, Kate's blah blah blah, and you can see the figures now. Now, if I calculate the percentages, you will get to know that uh, Sam's contribution is twenty percent, Kate's is forty uh, percent. Cans is thirty percent and uh, Lisa's is ten percent. So now, you know when you have to, when you see the data in a pictorial form, of course, if I've given you two charts, I'm asking for comparisons. So you can say Sam's increased, Kate's increased, maybe doubled, Cans remained the same, Lisa's decreased dramatically. So now you have two charts. Seems something similar to what you see in your exam, so you can write like what I have said um, by using the tabular form. It's the same here, uh, just that you have um, sectors in place of columns. So again, Sam's you can see ten, twenty. So you can easily see that Sam's contribution has increased in percentage terms, and if you see uh, because by you know because of the sizes of the pictures only or the sectors only you can get to know that kate's contribution has increased or doubled or something so again pie graphs are very useful because just by looking at them you can get to know the comparative you know analysis of uh, the contributions now this was this was more complex than the previous one but let's see can it be made uh, more complex now you have two sets of friends sam kate can lisa and they are two years also and then you have you know another set that is suzy karen max and ross for them also you have two years now this uh, pie chart sorry this uh, um, i would say these statistics have four components two years and two uh, sets of friends these are called key features when you read a question in your task one um, 
summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. So those main features are the number of categories. So first of all, you what you should be doing is that you should be making comparisons where relevant. You should not make a comparison between Sam and Susie because they would be like, what should be done about, you know, how, how can you compare an apple with an orange? You know, when you have two years for the same person, why would you be comparing the person with someone else? So what you should be doing at the start is that you should be uh, making a distinction between which set is going to be where. And you should take two years for one set and then the two years for the other one. So as the comparisons are relevant, what good will it do if you compare can with max? Nothing. So you should be talking about the first set in the first body paragraph and the second set in the second body paragraph. And of course, both years for a set should be discussed in the um, assigned body paragraph only. So maybe what you can do is that you can forget for now this table and this table. That means the second set of ends. And you can look at this. So for the first time, because you have, uh, suppose this question was there in your exam. So first you should be looking at the first set only, and you should be talking about how the things have increased or decreased. And as soon as the first set is completed for both years, you can get to the second set. And that would be something again, as in suppose this question comes in your exam like this. Since we're focusing on pie charts right now. So you have one of a kind here. You know, you have a pie charts uh, task in your exam. And uh, of course, it's, it looks something very intimidating uh, to, it can look very intimidating to a novice a person who is completely new to this thing. But if you see, it was very simple. We just collected data and uh, gave it a pictorial look. So first you can uh, ignore the second. You, first you must look at the fact that there are two years and then you should look at the fact that um, the first set of uh, friends uh, pertains to the first two pie charts and uh, the second set of friends pertains to the second set of pie charts. So you should be ignoring the second set for uh, your first body paragraph and you should be looking at the first set and comparing them. And then the second set in the second body paragraph and an overview can be written using uh, one line could be there on the first uh, one and one line could be there on the second one as in the charts. And uh, then of course, it could be like the given, maybe this question could come in your exam. Uh, the pie charts given below represent the data about the contributions made by two sets of friends in 2010 and 2020. Um, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. In the overview, what you can write is maybe Like maybe one of the things, it's not a, you know, a standard thing. So maybe in 2010, Lisa and uh, Max made the biggest contributions in their respective sets. And in 2020, the largest contributions were made by Uh, Karen and uh, Kate. Yeah, Kate and Karen. So this could be a good overview, as in nothing beyond that. And then you can then you can go on describing the details in the body paragraphs. This was a good overview, but of course not a proper one because right now my focus is not on making an overview, but uh, on telling you how a pie charts question is made. I wanted uh, you to know the nitty gritty of 
the data that is used so it was not about making an overview here so if you have understood it very well if you have not keep working hard and uh, if this video was useful give it a like and uh, share it with someone who needs it thank you